Am I in the Baywa? Am I in the Baywa Gandhi? The Baywa ne moons wa usina magumo muviri wangu wa panduka. Shino mwana chaya mwe. My own body wages war against my own bosom, the sacred fountain of nourishment. Pain. Pain pounds the tissues of my delicate flesh. When the epitome of my womanhood faces its fall, am I the bayo? Divisei womuns wa uyu sinama gumo. A brute, this thorn, which knows no end. Um, I first, my first experience with breast cancer was when I was 18. Um, I developed a lump uh, under my breast. I would say that um, you know you see little bits of ad of of you see adverts and you see things about breast cancer, but you know to be totally honest, there isn't very much that's that's happening um, in terms of awareness. And especially 22 years ago, you know there was there wasn't there wasn't very much. Um, I realized I had a lump. Um, it was quite painful, so that what that's what prompted me to go to for a checkup. Um, I'm so thankful that it was benign, um, but that was like the, my first my first experience with um, with breast cancer. I got to know about breast cancer when I was 10 years old. We were tenants to this other family in Blawayo. Uh, I really did not understand what breast cancer is, and then from then, I never got any teaching or advice about breast cancer. All out here was HIV and AIDS. Until 2018, I was 24, when my best friend lost her mother from breast cancer. It was a terrible experience because we experienced it together from the first stage to the last. It's not a pleasant memory. You know, in Zimbabwe, it's 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 um, your the breasts have become this this thing that that is it makes people uncomfortable. You know, it's people find it uncomfortable if women are breastfeeding. So I think that there needs to be more dialogue in terms of, you know, making it more comfortable. Because if you look at our ancestry and where we come from, it was never an issue. You know, your breasts were there. Everything was was available. It was it was open. You know, um, it, it, we need to we need to have conversations about this, and we need to. I feel like uh, our children, like I, I have to, and to to be able to talk to my daughter about her breasts and not be uncomfortable because we've, we've become so uncomfortable with our bodies that we no longer that we no longer take care of them the way that we're supposed to and uh, look out for look look for the signs of sickness and and stuff like that Breast cancer is simply malignancy of the breast tissue. By malignancy, we simply mean that these cells are now cancerous, they are aberrant, they have got potential for local and distant invasion. There are mainly two types of lumps or growths that essentially get in your breast. Uh, by lumps or growth, what we mean is if you palpate or if you touch your breast tissue, if you feel there's something that is abnormal, usually you can feel something that could feel like size of a peanut or it could be bigger, it can even get the size of an orange. That's what we call a lump and these usually are abnormal. So once you feel a lump, there are two possibilities that you can have. One, it could be a benign breast tumor. Two, it could be a malignant breast tumor. A benign breast tumor is not cancerous. A benign breast tumor does not have capacity to spread distantly and it does not have capacity to invade local tissues. A malignant breast tumor, that's now what is cancerous. And this one has got potential to invade local structures like the pectoralis muscle, like the ribs, and also the skin around. And then it also has capacity to do distant metastasis or spread to distant organs or distant structures like the lungs or the 
lymphatics into the lymph nodes usually the ones in the armpit or the axilla are the ones that are affected the most we also have what is called hematogenous spread or spread through the blood this one will take the cancerous cells to distant organs like the liver and the lungs these are the main types of breast tumors that you get so when it comes to demographic data breast cancer is the commonest cancer in women globally Worldwide, breast cancer is the commonest cancer in women. It affects more than 2.5 million women every year. And at least 600,000 women die of breast cancer every year. This is a significant number. Imagine 600,000 women dying of breast cancer every year. And imagine 2.5 million women being affected by breast cancer every year. So because of this, we encourage early screening and early detection to minimize mortality and to minimize the deaths due to breast cancer. October to me is a month of breast cancer awareness, but to me, um, I'm not really sure if uh, a month is enough uh, to educate the whole of Zimbabwe about, the, about breast cancer. Uh, we, do we really know what causes breast cancer? Um, are schools getting uh, effective uh, teachings about breast cancer? The diagnosis of breast cancer is mainly through tissue biopsy. Tissue biopsy means you have to take a small chunk or a small bit of flesh from the lump that you have developed in your breast and you send it to the lab and then the lab scientist or the pathologist looks at the tissue and they will see that there is cancer or there are cancerous cells then they confirm with your doctor that is the main way to diagnose breast cancer. Yes, if you get a lump, we suspect you've got breast cancer, but not all lumps are breast cancers. Some lumps are benign, some are malignant. So if you've got a benign lump, you do not have cancer. If you've got a malignant lump, you've got cancer. The only way you can tell that this lump is benign or malignant is mainly by tissue biopsy. So we take a small chunk of meat, we send it to the lab. At times we do what is called an excisional biopsy. Excisional biopsy means you're going to remove the whole lump, then we send it to the lab. If you're lucky, we do an excisional biopsy, the lab will confirm it's cancer, then it will tell us that the edges of the cancer were all resected. Then you're already cured through just a biopsy. So yes, we need to do a tissue biopsy for us to make a diagnosis of breast cancer. The other things that we may also need to do if we're investigating you for breast cancer, they include a full blood count, want to see how much blood you've got. Some people get cancer, get um, anemic because of cancer. Cancer causes anemia. So if you're anemic, that could be a reason for you to be screened again for breast cancer. And then you might need to do tests for liver function, you might need to do tests for your kidney function to see how well you're doing. At times you see altered liver function, then you can pick breast cancer from that. Then we can also do what you call a staging CT scan. A staging CT scan usually, this is now when you've confirmed that you've got breast cancer, we do a CT scan usually of the chest and of the abdomen to see if there are any other places where this cancer has gone. If it has spread to the lungs, you see it on the CT scan. If it has spread to the liver, you can see it on the CT scan. If it has not spread, then you can also see it on the CT scan. Then we stage you from stage one to four, depending on what the CT scan will also tell us. So these are the main tests that we do to make a diagnosis. And then there are other tests that we can do to see the type of the cancer and so on. Usually these are the main ones. Once we do these ones, we've got a management plan for you to take. Breast cancer essentially has got four stages. Usually when it's stage one, this is the earliest and you want to detect it when it's still in stage one. Usually it's just a simple lump that is in the breast that is not invaded local tissues and definitely is not spread to distant tissues. And once we get this lump, if we remove or reject the lump at this stage, chances of us removing the breast cancer at once and you won't suffer from it again are very high. So essentially we want to detect the cancer when it's still at stage one so that we minimize chances of complications. Stage two, now the cancer has grown in size to at least more than two centimeters in diameter and usually it's now invading the structures that are nearby. This is now stage 
to breast cancer. Yes, stage two is also okay. You can do a mastectomy, you remove the whole breast and you can do away with the cancer once and for all. These are the early stages, stage one and stage two. Then stage three and stage four, these are now the late stages. These are difficult to operate and it's also difficult to get rid of the cancer once and for all. In stage three, usually there is now spread to the local tissues. Maybe it has now involved the muscles of the chest or maybe the ribs. Usually at this point, it's too late to do an operation. You can do an operation that we call debulking surgery. You remove the breast tissue and minimize the amount of uh, breast cancer cells that remain. Then maybe you go there and do chemotherapy and reduce therapy on top depending on the response for the patient then stage four usually this one has got distant metastasis it has already spread to the axilla it has already spread to the abdomen maybe to the liver to the lungs at this point in time surgery will not help much yes you can do surgery to reduce the amount of breast tissue but definitely you need chemotherapy and radiotherapy so the best is to get the cancer whilst it's at stage one or later stage two if we diagnose the cancer at stage one stage two we can just remove part of the breast or just remove the whole breast then you're okay and you won't have the symptoms of breast cancer and the cancer is gone and it's gone for good so we encourage screening at an early stage every woman should be able to screen themselves for breast cancer when they feel and suspect they've got a lump or a tumor or a growth then we encourage that they go and see a doctor or a specialist to examine them to see if there is a breast lump there are a lot of myths that come with breast cancer people come with different theories and different issues that they think either they will get it or they won't i'm here to demystify all these myths the first myth that I want to demystify is the myth that if there is no one in your family that has got breast cancer, you won't have it. Believe you me, you are wrong. Breast cancer does not respond to that. It doesn't respect the fact that no one in your family has never had it. Yes, we say that if you've got a family history, you've got a higher chance. But we are getting a lot of cases of people that develop breast cancer with absolutely no family history, no mother, no sister, no cousin, no aunt ever develop breast cancer and they develop breast cancer so whether there's someone in your family who's had it or not please go and get screened only about 10 percent of all the active cases of breast cancer right now they are the ones with a family history and 90 percent do not have any family history so you see 90 percent of people with breast cancer do not have any family history of breast cancer and only 10 percent do have a family history so do not think yourself if your family has got no history of breast cancer okay so why do we only wait till october to talk about breast cancer it should be a conversation that we're having right throughout the year because it seems that only in october does it become a priority only in october do we start wearing pink and having marathons and stuff to do with cancer only in october i mean if you look at it the statistics the cancer rates are going up we should be talking about it from January to December and not just in October alone. We see pink ribbons, we see these marathons about breast cancer and breast cancer awareness campaigns and it ends there. Why? Yet with HIV and AIDS, it's talked about each and every day. People are educated about HIV and AIDS in school, it's everywhere, in clinics. Many people are talking about HIV and AIDS for years now and awareness programs have been created for HIV and AIDS but now it's not a deadly disease compared to cancer. Many people are dying from cancerous diseases, breast cancer being one of them. And I think it is high time that we alert people, especially women, about breast cancer. You know, more more needs to be more needs to be. You know, it needs to be much much bigger than 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 September month, October month. Sorry, it needs to be much bigger than just a month of pink ribbons. You know, we need to do proper awareness. We need to do teachings, the the skill. So not just in October, because everything right now is in is October and it seems like it's just a pink month. What's killing more people? HIV and AIDS or cancer? I believe it's time we stop, evaluate and review the numbers between HIV and AIDS and cancer. If you look at HIV and AIDS, you can prolong your life. 
you know if you eat healthy you take all your meds you know you live you live according to to the guidelines but in cancer once 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 you detect it late that's it you have you have quite a slim chance of of survival and it's and it's and it's quite fast so if if you have let's say you have you you, you get breast cancer sometimes you only have a year or, or two if, if if you're lucky but with hiv and aids you can live to I know, I know some people that have had it for 20, 30 years, 40 years even, just by maintaining the diet and, and, and the medication. I feel we need to have those conversations more because women are dying from breast cancer every day. The second myth is people say, I am slim, I will not develop breast cancer. I am slim, my family is slim, my genes keep me slim, so I won't develop breast cancer. It's not true. Yes, people who are obese have got a higher incident of developing breast cancer, but we are getting cases of people that are slim, and there have been cases of people that are slim that have developed breast cancer. So, yes, you need to exercise, lose weight, and maintain a slim body to minimize the chance of developing breast cancer, but that does not mean slim people will not develop breast cancer. The third myth is that people believe that there is nothing you can do to get breast cancer. Kanawango ita omnyama and then you develop breast cancer. If you're lucky, you won't develop breast cancer. It's not so, it's not so true. Yes, there are people with genetic predisposition that will develop breast cancer. But even those with genetic predisposition, not everyone with a mother with breast cancer will develop breast cancer. There are risk factors, there are things that you can do to minimize your chance of developing breast cancer. If you're obese, go to the gym, exercise, lose weight, you minimize the chance of developing breast cancer. If you're a smoker, stop smoking you minimize the chance of developing breast cancer. Eat less junk food. In fact, stop eating junk food. Eat healthy foods, fruits, vegetables, plenty of vitamins. It will minimize the chance of developing breast cancer. Exercise more. These are the things that you can do to minimize your chances of developing breast cancer. And yes, you can prevent or minimize your chances of developing breast cancer. The fourth myth is that only people with a lump are the ones with breast cancer or are the ones who develop breast cancer. It's not true. Some of the signs and symptoms of breast cancer do not even include a lump. Things like lactating or producing milk when you are not pregnant, when you are not breastfeeding, or any discharge that is coming from your nipple. Nipple retraction, we talked of pre orange. If you've got any of these signs, ulceration on your breast, suspect it could be a breast cancer. Yes, you can get breast cancer without a lump. Most cases of breast cancer come with a lump first, but we get cases that just come without a lump. If you see any of these, discharge from your nipple, nipple retraction, pud orange, ulceration from your breast skin, suspect it could be breast cancer, whether or not you've got a lump. Traditionally, in, in our African culture, um, the mothers have always passed information down to their daughters and passed, you know, information on bodies, on marriage, on, you know, down to cooking and stuff like that. And I feel that, you know, we should, we should have the, we should add it into the tradition for us to learn to check our breasts and to check for, for, for cancer and abnormalities and any, any, any signs of difference because, you know, um, most deaths are related to late response and finding out late that the cancer has spread. So if, if we uh, teach our daughters now to check themselves, then early detection, less deaths, you know, cancer free. The fifth myth is that only the old or the elderly get breast cancer. It's not true. There are some variants of breast cancer that affect the young. Yes, most breast cancers, as we say, they affect people in the sixth decade of life going onwards. But we are getting cancer in patients that are even younger, especially if there are other comorbidities such as HIV. You get someone who developed advanced breast cancer in their late 20s, yet they are still young. So please, whether you are still young or not, minimize your chance of developing breast cancer go and get screened more frequently from the age of 25 you should start getting your breast cancer screening the sixth myth that we have is that breast cancer only affects women and doesn't affect men gentlemen men i'm talking to you right now 
you are at a risk of developing breast cancer. We say 1% of all cases of breast cancer develop in men. And usually breast cancer in men is more malignant and more invasive. And also is diagnosed late because men do not think they've got breast cancer or they develop breast cancer. So if you are a man, you see your breasts are growing in an abnormal way, you feel a lump in your breast, there's an ulcer or a wound on your breast, there's some discharge from your breast, definitely, definitely go and get screened, go and talk to your doctor and get checked. You might be developing breast cancer. The seventh myth is that breast cancer is a disease for white women only. This is so not true. Breast cancer, it does not have any favoritism. It does not affect the Caucasians more than the blacks. The prevalence in the white and in the black community, we say is just the same. The risk factors are just the same for both whites and blacks or even Asians, the risk is just the same. Obesity, smoking, family history, these are the same. They affect both whites and blacks equally. So, black women, you are also at an increased risk of developing breast cancer. Please get screened frequently. Uh, I'm trying to understand why it's so difficult to get an, uh, a breast cancer test. Because if you look at HIV and AIDS, you, there's so many centers dotted around. You can actually buy a test over the counter. But when it comes to breast cancer, there's one or two places and that's it. HIV screening and testing services are easily accessible and available in Zimbabwe. The same should go for cancer treatment and screening services. What I would love to see in Zimbabwe are more screening facilities at uh, the referral hospitals level, even the district hospitals, or at the community hospitals. Look at the comparisons between uh, HIV testing and breast cancer testing. The HIV test is so cheap, and um, it's obviously being subsidized. So why can't we do the same for breast cancer? The management of breast cancer is essentially the most important thing that I want you to remember if you're going to remember anything about management of breast cancer. Number one is prevention, prevention, prevention. We want to prevent breast cancer and we want to diagnose it as soon as possible. So screening, screening, screening. We need to screen for breast cancer. Examine yourself every day on the mirror. This is how you examine yourself to see if you've got breast cancer or not. The first thing that you can do is to hold your waist like this. Then you protrude your chest and your breasts outside. If you see any asymmetry or any lumps that you can see on your breast, suspect there is breast cancer. After you look on the mirror and you see a lump, palpate or touch that breast that you feel there's a lump and feel and confirm if there's a lump. If there is a lump or something that you don't understand or something suspicious or fishy, please feel free to visit the doctor near you or a gynecologist or a surgeon, anyone that can help you to make a diagnosis of breast cancer. Or secondly, you can put your hands behind your head like this. You hold your hands out and then you protrude your chest out. You can also see the lumps. And then after that, you proceed to examine yourself. If you see anything suspicious, any lumps, any skin changes, ulcers or discharges from your nipple, please go and see a doctor. We do not want to wait until the symptoms are complex. We want to catch the cancer at an early stage so that we can be able to solve it and to treat it amenably without any complications. So please always examine yourself on a daily basis. Now the main modalities of treatment are surgery, there is medical, there is radiotherapy and there is chemotherapy. Those are the four main modalities of breast cancer treatment. Essentially the modalities depend on the stage of the breast cancer. If it's an early stage, stage one, stage two, we can do surgery. Surgery can be simply removing the lump, lumpectomy, that's the first level. If you just remove the lump, at times the cancer will just go away and that's it. You send this specimen to the lab and the lab will tell you that the wall or the entire cancer has been removed. And then you are good to go. You won't need chemotherapy or radiotherapy. You just need follow-up uh, examinations after that. Secondly, if the lump is, say, it's now too big or it's now spread to a bit of uh, local tissues, you need a mastectomy. Mastectomy simply means removal of the whole breast. So you can do 
a simple mastectomy if the lump is still confined to the breast and you see that it is not spread to local structures you can just remove the whole breast and you are good to go the cancer is removed and it's removed completely you can do another type of a mastectomy called a radical mastectomy this is now when we see that the cancer is already spread to the armpits to the lymph nodes in the armpits now we do the radical mastectomy this way we remove the whole breast tissue then we dissect further and go to the armpits and remove some of the lymph nodes or all of the lymph nodes that we can remove that we think they've got cancer that is radical mastectomy Usually these procedures, they are curative if the cancer is still limited to the breast. If the cancer has already spread, you will need to go to the next level of treatment. There is medical treatment for breast cancer. There are some hormonal therapies that we give for breast cancer. There are certain types of breast cancers depending on what we call some BRCA1, BRCA2. Then you choose which drugs to use on this type of cancer. So you might also need to be given some medication, just medical treatment to manage your cancer. But surgery is usually the mainstay and the best. And then the third modality is chemotherapy. Chemotherapy this way by we give you, it could be tablets or it could be injections that we give you or drips to kill the cancer cells. Chemotherapy simply means chemical therapy. Chemo for chemical therapy, that is chemotherapy. So we use chemicals to kill the cancer cells. So this is a bit more aggressive and usually we do it for cancer that is already spread either locally or distant. Then we give you chemotherapy that is relevant to the type of cancer that you have. There are a lot of uh, cancer types, breast cancer type that you can get. So depending on which type you have, if it responds better to chemotherapy, we can give you chemotherapy. And there are sessions, you can go for a week, some go for a month depending on what exactly it is. Or you can even go for longer for you to get cured from the cancer. So chemotherapy simply means we're using drugs or chemicals to kill the cancer cells. Then we we'll move on to radiotherapy, which is the fourth modality of treatment of breast cancer. Radiotherapy simply means you're using radiation energy. We send this radiation energy to you. They are invisible rays that you won't see with your eyes, but we send them and concentrate them to the breast tissue where the lump is then that can dissolve the lump and kill the lump normally we do this with advanced breast cancer that can be rejected completely with surgery and also at times you do radio and chemotherapy at the same time before you go in to do surgery this at times it will help we call it neoadjuvant chemo radiotherapy it will help to shrink the tumor before you go in to operate once the tumor is shrinked or is shrunken then you've got the capacity to reject the entire tumor without having any problems. Or you can do chemo radiotherapy post-operatively. After you operate, you go on to do chemo and radiotherapy to minimize the amount of spread of the tumor. Or maybe you go into operate and then you realize that ah, the cancer it already spread to local structures. And then you may need to add chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And at times you can do palliative chemotherapy and radiotherapy. This simply means, palliation means we are just helping you to live better towards the end of your life. We have seen that the cancer has already spread and there is nothing much you can do to get rid of the cancer. But want you to have a good send-off. You live life better. You don't have any pain. You live life well. That's palliation. So it can give you chemotherapy and radiotherapy, maybe to reduce bleeding and maybe to reduce the size of the cancer. But it's not curative. It does not take away the cancer. It will make life better for you. So that's the last modality of treatment for breast cancer.